Good afternoon, everyone. I just thought I'd pop in and uh, see how you all had on, uh, what sort of time you had on the weekend. Uh, just thought I'd pop in and have a bit of a chat with you, um, just to say hi, answer some questions if anyone has them. Uh, this wasn't a scheduled um, stop on, so I'm not sure how many people will get in the chat, but let me just bring up the chat window, um, just so we can see. <clears throat> just make sure I can get that up, so I can see who's online. So if you are there, uh, just say hi guys. I'd love to see you who's here. <clears throat> so I'll just give a little bit. G'day Keith, how you going mate? Good to see you uh, here. Just thought I'd pop in and have a, a live chat with you all. Um, David's here as well. Good to see you here too, David. I'm just gonna leave it a couple of minutes, so we'll wait and see if we can get some more people in. Uh, let me just see if I can get this up here. Yeah, just thought I'd have a chat. Peter's here as well, g'day Peter. Um, must be late for you guys uh, over there. Vic's here as well from Canada. Nice to see you all, guys. Yeah, I just thought I'd pop in and just have a bit of a chat. I've just had lunch. Um, it's uh, Monday afternoon here, one twenty-one. Um, but I just thought I'd have a chat. I, I believe it's a holiday coming up for uh, my friends in the States. I'm not sure what it's for, but it's a holiday. Let me know if you know what that's actually for. Um, I don't know if I'll even keep this on. I just thought I'd have a chat with everyone. I'll just see... Uh, Ben's here from New York. Geez, you guys mustn't sleep. <laughs> What's the time over there? It must be late. Let me check what time it is around the world. Um, in Los Angeles, it's 8.22 p.m. New York, it's 11.22. Oh, it's not too bad then, but London, it's 4.22. So I'm not sure how many will get in from the uh, UK. Uh, but yeah, so if you have any questions, guys, just throw them at me. Um, I'd love to see uh, if any of you have questions. Um, Keith said, Labor Day holiday is killing me when I have a business with my consulate. What, what's the holiday for, Keith, over there? I'm not actually certain what it is, so let me know um, what it is. <laughs> ben just said, sleep is for wusses. <laughs> I'm hopeless if I don't get enough sleep, Ben. If I don't get my nine hours, or at least seven, I'm a mess in the morning. Um, but I've always been a good sleeper, so if I don't get it, I'm, I'm hopeless. I want to talk to you about a uh, new gimbal I've got as well. I don't celebrate it and forgot what it was for. <laughs> so if there's any other people from the US, let me know what it's for, guys. I'd love to know. It's called Labor Day, isn't it? So is it something to do with workers or something or um, working people or something? Or um, he said, I don't celebrate it, but people cook out and get fat. Why are they, what, they go out for the day? Is that what you're saying, uh, Keith? <laughs> so how's your weekend been guys just let me know if you've had any shoots um here um, peter v day off for people who are supposed to work oh okay so is it just a is it just a, a holiday for um for because I, I would have thought being labor day it's just listed down as a as a public holiday is that right just for workers uh is that all it's for or was it originally for something else i'm just curious so let me know if anyone does know what it's actually for. I'd love to know. Labor Day is where people <laughs> get fat and drink and start fights for day off works. I had to work this weekend. Hi Jim, how are you mate? Good to see you. I've just popped in just for a chat with everyone. Um, no particular reason, just thought I'd say hi to everyone. Uh, it's just nice to have a chat with you guys. I've just had a nice lunch. It's bloody freezing here today. Well, we've just come out of spring, but it's 12 degrees Celsius. I mean, that might not be cold for some Europeans and Americans in, in, in their winter, but um, boy, it's cold this week. Uh, I was planning on doing a shoot, but I'm not sure I will now. I think it's gonna be a bit cold this week. I did miss you, Keith. <laughs> uh, sitting in my lonely studio all by myself, um, twiddling my thumbs. I should bring Susie in and start talking to Susie. Susie will keep me company. <laughs> 
Where is Susie? I think she's hiding. I'm gonna go get Susie, hang on. Susie's back, everyone. Oh. Oh, Susie's fell off. Oh no! Susie! How did Susie fall? Susie just had an accident. This is terrible. Um, what have you said? Keith says it's 42. Oh, I'm hanging out for when it's like that here, Keith. I can't wait for when it's uh, warm. I love the heat, though, so I'm not a winter person, so for me it's... Uh, <laughs> Vic said she's been drinking. You kill my girlfriend, David. <laughs> she's all right, look. I was a bit worried that Susie was going to be hurt there, but I think, I think Susie's all right. See, she's fine. Nothing wrong with Susie. Nice little hat here. Look after Susie. <laughs> I think after that fall, though, she <laughs> I think she might have had a couple of drinks while I was down having lunch. I'm not sure. Uh. <laughs> David says you are so abusive. <laughs> uh. David, it wasn't my fault. She just fell off. I, I, can't, I can't help Susie if she falls off the chair. There's nothing I can do about Susie. <clears throat> oh, dear. Ben said, Labor Day is a creation of the... Oh, hang on, let me bring this up here so we can see it all, because otherwise I'm just going to be looking at everyone. Might be better this way. And then let me just enlarge this page. Oop, not that one. It's this one. Just so you can all see the questions. Let me go back to this one. Oh, you still can't see them. Why is it doing that? Well, perhaps I've got to do it on that one. Oh, there we are. I oh, know. I don't know. Uh, where are I? Capture mini one. Let me make this one a bit bigger. And let me crop it in. Let me crop that side in. Let me make it a bit bigger. A bit smaller. Geez, I'm good looking. You guys gotta admit, I'm a handsome bloke. <laughs> uh, so let me have a look here. Let's see what some of you are saying. So. Ben said, Labor Day is a creation of the labor, labor movement and is dedicated to the social and economic achievements of American workers. It's a tribute to the contribution workers have made to our country. Oh, okay. We have a Labor Day here, actually, something similar. Uh, it honours, uh, so Jim said, it honours the American labor movement and contributions that workers have made to the strength, prosperity and well-being of the country. 2% Two, two of the whole monetary wealth. Jeez, I hope Susie's all right, guys. She had a hell of a fall. I don't, I don't quite know what happened there. <laughs> G'day, Michael. Good to see you in here. I'm just, I've just popped in to have a chat with you all. You just, did you see Susie's accident? People are saying that she's had a drink um, because she, <laughs> she just fell off her chair. <laughs> Love it. David says I, I'm abusing people all the time. <clears throat> Yeah, we're great, Michael. Just thought I'd pop in and have a chat, no particular reason. I just bought a gimbal, though, so I'll show you which one it is. Um, I'll bring it up in a minute so you can have a look. Uh, Michael said, hope all is well. Uh, that's <laughs> ben said, that's what all the abusers say. <laughs> you guys. It's the curse of Susie. I know, boy, that fall was shocking. I hope she's all right. She's very quiet over there, though. Oh, I don't know what's going on with Susie. She's very, very quiet. I don't think she's happy. <laughs> uh, Jim said he ad-libbed the 2% of people. <clears throat> Exo said, going on a six-hour workshop uh, shoot sponsored. They are pro uh, providing uh, top studio setup, pro models, pro lighting with strobes. Should I buy the Zeiss 55 for my A6500? I only have the 55 1.8 at the moment. Um, oh, 
I don't know if I'd have both of those two lenses, to be honest, uh, because they're, they're, they're very, very similar in the focal length. I, I'd probably get the... I, if I had those just that lens, I'd get the 24, 1.8. If I had that, because then you've got a 35 plus a 50. I, I think the 55 uh, is too close to the 50 millimeter. You're not really going to get any benefit um, from doing that. Uh, I mean, if, if you wanted to sell the 50 and then get the 55 because you wanted the full frame uh, lens, that'd be uh, fine to do that if you wanted some a full frame bit of glass. Because I love my 55 millimeter; it's so fast in focusing in low light. But if you've got the 50 at the moment and you're happy with that and you're staying with the A6500, I would probably get something like the 24 1.8. Let me know if you have any other lenses for it. Is that the only lens that you've got? <laughs> Ben said, funny how abused victims are clumsy. Look, you saw it. I was standing here and she just fell off. There was nothing I could do about it, Ben. It was, uh, I'm innocent. <clears throat> Bailey said, Susie is calling me right now for a runaway plan. <laughs> uh, Susie's not leaving me, guys. There's no way Susie's leaving this studio. <clears throat> She's got to keep, someone's got to keep me company. Uh, Techno said, got, uh, got 24 millimeters ice. Uh, they want 50 millimeter above. Oh, okay. Oh, so you've already got the 24. Well, um, yeah, I just don't reckon, that, I just don't think if, if you've got the 50 that the 55 would be any good to you because they're too close in their focal lengths. Um, I probably would sell the 50 then and buy the 55. Uh, Techno said, is the 50 millimeter APS, yeah, is it the APS-C version or is that the... Um, full frame version. Let, let me know, because I'd be curious on that too. Oh, yeah, well, I'll show you that gimbal. It's so cool. <laughs> Ben's in his, his dialing 911. Hey, that doesn't work here, Ben. Um, 911's not going to help you. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, I'm going to show you this gimbal. Hang on, let me go uh, and bring this up, because it's so cool. Um, I'll just hide the chat for a minute, and then let me bring this up window. Oh, where'd I put it? Did I stick it up there? Oh yeah, it's up there. Hang on, let me bring this down. Now I saw this yesterday, uh, reviewed on YouTube, and I thought, wow, I've got to get it. I don't know whether you guys have seen, let me just uh, make my pick a bit smaller. I don't know whether you guys have even heard about this place yet. I hadn't heard of them. It's, I think it's Fossy can. Um, oh, where's it gone? Oh, there. Um, yeah, it's it's called Fossy Cam. But what I love about it, and I know a lot of you are, are, are buying other gimbals and stuff, but this has an exciting feature that, well, it's got a couple of really exciting features that I love about this gimbal, is the fact that if you notice up the top, you can actually see the viewfinder because the way that this is actually, uh, let me just draw on it because I'll show you because it's so cool. Uh, I'll review it as soon as it comes. It's meant to be coming sometime this week. Um, 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 where is that? Desk scribble. Now, if you notice on the um, page, here, uh, the, the actual arm sits underneath so that you can view the full screen on the back when you're actually looking at this. Um, uh, lens. Now the problem is with my other gimbal, and I know it's the problem with all the other gimbals that are out there at the moment, you can't see the back of the screen when the uh, camera is mounted on the actual gimbal itself. So this is really good because you actually see the whole screen. And it, I really love that aspect of it. So when I put my A6500 on it, I'm going to be able to um, see the whole uh, screen at the back. And the other thing too that this gives you, it gives you a another axis. So I'll just see if we can play this because you might get to see how it looks. You can watch it because this Tom Antos, if you want to uh, view the video, actually takes you through it. But um, when you look at it, notice how the uh, screen at the back, you get full access to it. And it's, it looks like it's a really small gimbal, but it holds up to 1800 grams. So it'll hold a, up to a, G, a GH5 or an A7R2 with a decent lens on it uh, as well. But I love the way that that slants at the back like that, which which really is good because you can see it. Unlike the other gimbal that I've got, which is a Kame TV, um, you can't see the back of that screen. So this is a great little gimbal. It's just been released. And the other thing too is it, it actually um, will tilt on the edges. So it actually goes that way too. And you'll see in a second that he'll show it. 
And it, it's um, another thing that's the only gimbal that I've seen that offers that. Uh, let me come down here. I think he'll show it in a second. So it's on the on number four, but when you look at it now, it, it has this follow um, all axes. So see how it twists when you actually walk, you know, and you'll notice it when you come up to um, this door here that you can actually twist it like that. Now, normally, that this is one of the issues with gimbals that I found. Sometimes they can look a bit fake, and this gets around that because it gives it more of a natural uh, view to come in. The other thing as well is it comes with a um, charger that can connect to the actual gimbal into the camera, so you can charge your camera up while, it's, uh, while you're walking or working, and also you can actually start use stop and start on the gimbal Y uh, from the uh, gimbal as well. It'll start your recording on the camera as well at the same time. So, uh, oh, Cass, thank you so much. <laughs> He's um, just giving me a, a donation, thank you. So this is a really good, and like I said, I'll review this for you guys when I actually uh, get it. Um, but it seems to be looking like it's gonna be a really, really interesting uh, little gimbal. It takes up to 2.1 pounds. Actually, yes, yeah, it's, and it's it's so it's 400 uh, to 1800 grams. So, like I said, it'd hold a um, fairly decent sized camera, uh, which seems to be really really good. So, yeah. Now let me bring up the questions again so you guys can see. So, I'll if you want to read about that, like I said, look up uh, Fossy Cam, and I think it's T Tom An Antos Films at the top there. He's got a review of this on on YouTube. Uh, it's only just come out and it's really, really reasonably uh, priced. I think it was only 500 uh, something dollars US. So it, it's very competitive in its pricing at the moment. And someone said that when I looked at it, they said this is very, very similar to another uh, to another gimbal and that was around about 1,000 US dollars. And it's an exact copy of it. So I don't know how they do that in the Chinese market, copy these gimbals, but I love that idea of being able to see the gimbal at the back or the screen on the back rather than it being hidden. Um, so let me just bring this back up so we can go through the chats again. And let me grab that and just reduce that down a little bit. So what else have we got here? So what do you, let me know what you think about that, guys, whether you think that seems like it'll be a... a, a Good buy or not? I mean, I, I think it's going to be really, really interesting. So let me know what you guys think about that. Um, <laughs> Bailey St Keith said Susie is calling him right now and wants to uh, run away from home. <laughs> uh, Extreme says, uh, got that. Yeah, I've, I've worked that out before. Um, we'll sell the 50 millimeter. Um, what else have we got? Shows the gimbal, which I just did. I hope the gimbal in, in English is the same as the gimbal in the Aussie <laughs> English. Uh, David, let's have a serious talk about um, shadow depths of field and le uh, learn as the important facts that we should care when we are buying lens or camera. What elements can improve? Are you talking about the shallow depth of field? Is that what you're actually talking about there? Well, there's two things that can give you shallow depth of field. One is the lens, and also another one is the actual lens distance. Because, for instance, I can get amazing depth of field with an f4 lens, but it has to be a zoom lens like the 70 to 200. Uh, if I zoom in to 200 millimeter with a 70 to uh, 70 to 200 mil, uh, the background will be completely gone. So there's two ways that you can get that shallow depth of field. One is by having a lens that's like a, a 1.4 lens. Um, like the 85 1.4 or, or the 85 1.8 and the other way is to use a long lens and use compression So there's two different ways that you can get a beautiful shallow depth of field uh, I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about. So let me know if that's what you mean um, Techno Extreme said thanks for your videos on model shoots and working with strobes have given me confidence to finally try this type of shoot So I'm um, thanks so much. I'm glad you've got something out of that. It's like that, that means a lot to me um, Keith has said, can't wait to see you use it. Zushin Crane is releasing a new gimbals uh, soon with follow focus. And I did see that. Um, but the, the issue for me with that one is I think it's going to be very heavy because I want something that's reasonably light. See that other gimbal I have, I'll just grab it so you can see it. So see, this 
this gimbal that I have, I mean, it, it's this is the you don't have to have that on it, but this is the Came TV one that I use. But again, even like from what I've seen with that, um, the uh, crane one, you still can't see the back of the camera. And I think that new one is quite heavy. Now remember for me that um, I'm doing the, the fusion, so I'm often carrying the gimbal as well as um, having another camera in my hand, because I'm taking both sometimes, like video and stills at the same time. So for me, it's a bit of an issue that if, if if it gets very heavy, it's really hard to hold, and I want something to be really quite light. And I think you might find that that new um, crane is quite heavy, and it defeats the purpose for me. I'm not saying it's not gonna be an amazing gimbal, it probably is, but I don't know, sometimes the more things you put on them, the more that can you know have issues with, and I don't really need to follow focus, because I'll just focus once and then I'll leave it. Like, that that's the way that I'm working, or to be honest, with the A6500, I'm just putting it in autofocus and that's fantastic. So for me, I don't need something that's gonna give me a follow focus type control. I just need something that'll work like that. And I, I love the way that this gimbal particularly, like I said, I can see the screen at the back and it's the only gimbal I've seen where you can actually rotate to the sides like I showed you for when you're walking, it gives you that smooth look of moving into something. So, but I'll let you know cause I'll, I'll review it for you and you can see uh, what you think. I just bought it off Amazon yesterday, so they said I should get it within a week or a week and a half, so um, I'll let you know. Again, I'm not sponsored by them, so I'll let you know the truth of how it is, um, but it seems to be really, really good, and it's, it's, it looks like it's really, really quite light, uh, you know, nice and small, which is also really, really good. Um, I think there's a couple of downsides, though. I don't think it has an inverted mode, but I don't really use that anyway, but it doesn't have an inverted mode, I don't think. Uh, and... Um, what was the other thing? Oh, and it's got an internal battery, but you get 10 hours out of it. And I'd never use a gimbal for longer than that anyway. Um, so yeah, we'll just have to see. But it ships with the Sony connector to connect to it to the the actual gimbal so that I can actually use the uh, start and stop to take for video. Uh, and it also comes with the, you know, the power cable to actually power your, your camera from that internal battery as well. So, but I'll let you know how it is when I actually get it. Um, let me just come back here. See what else people are saying. Um, what's the best one-handed gimbal that holds about five pounds? Well, I'm not sure, Michael, because I've only ever used came, uh, the came gimbals. Um, five pounds is pretty heavy, though. Why would you want to put that much on? Have you got a massive? What sort of camera and lens do you want to put on? A 70 to 200 camera or some a lens or something? Because that's pretty heavy. I find even with that, this will take an A7R2. This this came. TV one, we'll take an A7R2 and, and the 2470, um, but I can't hold it for very long. That's the issue with it, it becomes very heavy. And even though it's still a one-handed gimbal, it, it becomes very hard to hold and then you start to, I just don't enjoy, sh enjoy shooting with them. So let me know why you'd want it that uh, heavy, Michael. I'm just curious to know. Um, yeah, I mean, shallow depth of field, does using a full sensor create better shallow depth of field than a cromp sensor? Yes, it does. Look, there's no doubt if you have a full frame sensor, you will always get better depth of field than if you have a uh, crop sensor. But to be honest, as long as you use fast glass, it's not that much different. I get beautiful out of focus shots with my A6500 um, with a decent lens like the 55. Uh, 55 1.8 will give me beautiful uh, depth of field. The two point, the 24 1.8 will give me beautiful depth of field as long as I'm fairly close to the subject that I'm shooting. Uh, like I said, for wedding um, images where I'm shooting details and stuff and I am shooting quite close, the background is lovely out of focus with that lens. So you can shoot a really, really good bokeh with um, an A6500 and APS-C lenses. So don't believe anyone that says you can't. Um, and even the GH5, like you've asked then, I, I get great shallow depth of field with that as long as I use the right lens. And if you use um, something like a speed booster, well, then you get amazing out of focus uh, using, you know, the Canon or Nikon lenses or Sigma lenses. Um, Caesar said, hi, David, love your work. Thanks so much. Really appreciate that. Um, Techno Extreme said, using small focus HD attached to crane V1 near the bottom with A6500 and it seems near perfect. Uh, small HD focus with smaller, uh, better battery is very light. Yeah, and I'm, I probably will use that small HD focus on that new gimbal that I've bought. It has the attachment on the side that you can actually uh, join onto. Um, what else have we got here? 
David, you've mentioned you use ice lights with, in one of your previous photo shoots. What brand are they? Well, they're actually ice lights. Um, if you go, I don't know whether Amazon sells them. Let me have a look. I think they do, because I think I put it in the kit. I'll just Google here. I'm just curious to see. Oop. See, I think they're only selling a third-party one. Oh, Westcott Ice Light, there you go. So that's the one that I recommend that you use. Now, they're not cheap, but the, you get what you pay for, you know? I mean, there's cheaper ones out there that you get, but I've found that this, uh, the light coming from an ice light is the closest thing that I've ever had to window light. Plus, you can screw them together. You, they actually have a, a device underneath that you can screw them, and then they um, all join together. Like, I've got three of these uh, that I use, and they're great to have one as like a hair light and then, and then a couple of others to sort of light from the face. You can buy barn doors for them. As you see down the bottom down here, um, there's barn doors that you can get if I move that over. Uh, you can buy external batteries so you can... Um, shoot a little bit longer. They also have like, now they're not controllable in, in color, but you can use the grids, which you can get to actually put on to give you a tungsten gel if you wanted to go that way. Um, but yeah, that that's the uh, ice light that I, I recommend. And I do actually believe, like I said, I've got the Neo Roto lights and they're, to be honest, they're, they're nowhere near as soft as what the ice light gives you. Look at Jerry Guionis's work, and he will shoot. He shoots with this all the time, and I've shot weddings with this for with them for probably three years, and I absolutely adore them. And it, it does give you like real window light, and it's it's just beautiful. And I, like I said, I don't get anything for them. Um, uh, you know that I get no kickback from them. Um, I've got them in my uh, Amazon page listed somewhere, so you can buy them through my link if you do actually do that. If you want to purchase one, I'd love you to do it through my affiliate links. If you go to my kit, you'll find them through there. Um, but yeah, great, unbelievable uh, light, stunning. Uh, best thing I've ever bought. What else have we got here? Um, Jim said, um, I just did my first photo shoot for a high school senior. Uh, A6500 and the 55 1.8 did a great job. Also used the A72 with a 70 to 200. Yep. And I love, like I said, I love my A6500. I did have two A72s, but I sold them uh, when I got the A9 uh, and I was getting the GH5. But I love my A6500 and that works amazingly with the A55. Remember, you get the 85 millimeter uh, field of view, so it's, it's like you're using an 85 on there and it works fantastic. Um, which focus zones do you use when you take photos of groups larger than eight? I start to use, um, I always get, forget which focus zone. Or what I do is I use the uh, movable um, box. I've gone blank with the name. I use the movable box and I, you must focus into the middle of the group. So if you have multiple groups, try and put your focus point in the center uh, of them and then you'll have um, focus at the front and at the back and basically use something like F8 above. Um, that's the way that I always tend to use, and it works for me, and I, I sort of stick it down that way, like I'd probably use a F8, F10, something like that, and then you'd find that they'd all be in focus, as long as you focus, uh, you put your point in the middle. Flexible spot, that's what it is. Yeah, I'll use that. Um, good to know, uh, but you would be better off um, raising your aperture 5.6. Yes, you would. Uh, definitely to get people in focus, definitely above f8 if I'm doing uh, multiple groups. Uh, what else have we got? Enjoy, you mate. Keep up the great work. Alan, thanks, mate. Caesar said, cheers, David. However, when do I choose a zone? I've got a small moving dots. Is Oh, yeah, yeah, don't. That's why I'm saying use, um, use flexible spot if you're going to be shooting those sort of groups. Otherwise, it could go anywhere. Use flexible spot, go into the middle of the group, middle of the rows, and then, and if there's three groups, uh, focus on the second row, etc., etc., and then it's uh, everything will be in focus that way. Uh, ben said, "Jerry Guionis, uh, the ice light, uh, so of course he uses it. Yeah, uh, he he was he's actually an Australian. Um, he lives in Melbourne and the States, um, so he did develop it. <laughs> he said, now is ours.'" 
I think he has a great life, Jerry. He lives half of the he lives the summer here, and he lives obviously over with you guys when it's um, your summer. Then he, he swaps over, so he, he never really has winter. Um, Aswin said thanks for the reply, but I usually record in my room and I can't use the long focal length. Even 55 needs 67 metres for medium shot, and that's impossible. Yeah, if it's a small room, well, then you're going to have to use, um, a, you know, something like a 35 mil, something like that, but still be shooting F8. Uh, so throw some other questions at me, guys. I'd love to see what you're all saying. What's happening here? Let me go back to YouTube. Let me put that back up there. I'm using multiple screens. I should show you one day my setup. Um, so give me some more questions. Let me know what you think about that gimbal. I mean, how many of you are using gimbals? I'll, I can't wait to show it to you. Like I said, as soon as I get it, I'll do a video for you all and I'll review it. You can watch that Tony Antos one though if you want to look at a video of that already. So have got any other questions you want, guys? Otherwise, I'm uh, going to have to go and chat back to Susie. She's still over there sitting very lonely. <clears throat> Don't think I missed any questions before. No, I don't think so. We were just having jokes about Susie and stuff before. Um... I'm still going to do, Aswin says, what's happened to that GH5 shoot? I was actually going to do that on the weekend, but the weather here turned feral. Because um, I want to do one in the canola. Uh, so I did ask, and I had a shoot set up. But because the weather was so bad, uh, it was incredibly windy, I decided to cancel it. So I may do one this weekend. Actually, I can't do one this weekend. This weekend I'm going to VideoCon, uh, or VidCon, um, here in Melbourne, it's, it runs for the whole weekend, so I can't do a shoot uh, this weekend, but I might have some time during the week if I'm lucky. If not, I'll definitely do one the week after. Uh, so I am still going to do that photo shoot with the GH5. I just haven't had time. Um, you know, I've had a lot of wedding meetings. I've had a number of brides that have booked weddings. Um, so I haven't really had the time to get out and do one, but I was gonna do one actually Saturday evening, um, but I just didn't have time because of the weather. So it was canceled, so. <laughs> Ben said Susie's afraid to move. I'm still trying to improve my photography skills before I start on video. David, just make sure you do, mate, because like I said before, and I'm going to talk about that when we do when I start to put again on that setting up your wedding photography business. It's it's definitely a way, guys, that you can get more work because trust me, if you're trying to set up in a uh, as a photography business, it's getting harder and harder. Most of my work, not most of it, but a lot of my weddings that I book now, they book me because I can do the stills and the video at the same time. So yes, there is a bit of a learning curve, but it can separate you from being just a normal photography uh, business where you can offer photography and stills, uh, video. Eventually, I think within five years, if you don't offer video, you're not gonna have a job. So you do definitely need to get onto it, guys, and try to start learn now. Um, Vic said, uh, related to photography, but what temperature around uh, Christmas in Australia? Oh, okay, well, that's our summer. So, um, uh, look, the average probably in summer will be around 28 degrees, I suppose. You could say 28 to 30 is probably um, our average summer temperatures. We will often get um, over 40. It just depends on how hot of a summer we actually um, have. But, yeah, in summer here, it's, it's basically beach weather. Uh, Christmas here is beach weather, so a lot of people do celebrate Christmas Day um, by going down to the beach. Because we come from a very English background, um, we still have hot dinners on Christmas Day, which is quite funny. So often the time we're all sweating and carrying on having this big roast and, and things like that. <clears throat> but when really we should be probably having salads and stuff like that because it's definitely the opposite to what you guys in the States and Europe have. Um, Vic said, sending my granddaughter to Sydney for Christmas. Yeah, well, it's definitely going to be hot, Vic. Uh, so plan on having her wear uh, very warm clothing because uh, it will be very warm. Um, Techno Extreme said, would love to see some tutorials or demos using the Godox 350 uh, and or the 860 Sony. 
realize that's not Pro Photo Pro, but it's what I will use for run and gun. I know I'd love to show you that, guys. The, the, the thing for me, it's really, really hard because a lot of photographers that do show those sort of things are sponsored and they get that stuff sent to them by places like B&H and places like that, so they're not actually purchasing that gear. Um, so for me to actually review that sort of stuff, I'd have to purchase it. And to be honest, there's no way I'm going to be purchasing that sort of stuff when I've got something like Pro Photo sitting in the studio. Because remember that the hard part for me is that I've got three Pro Photo B1s and I've also got three D1s as well. Um, so for me then to justify purchasing something like Godex, I just can't justify doing it. So it's a really hard thing for me to actually do. Hopefully as my channel grows, then some people may send me some of this stuff that um, I can actually review and then I could send back. Uh, but yeah, unless someone like B&H sends me the stuff, and that's what a lot of YouTubers are doing. But the other thing too is, I always want to be real with you guys, and I don't want to be reviewing something that I'm really not going to be using. So for me, it's really hard to review something like that because I never want to lie to you. I don't want someone to send me something and then just give it a good review because um, they've sent it to me. Everything that I have is always purchased by me. So I know that I'm going to give you a, a, a trustworthy view. So yeah, it's a hard thing for me to do there with that. I'm more going to be sort of showing you like I have been of setting up your business and, and how to shoot models and things like that. I oh, thank you so much, Michael. Um, I really appreciate that, mate. But you know, it's it's not, this channel's not about that for me. It's not about just showing you something that I, I don't use myself. Um, but remember, even though I'm using Profoto, it's exactly the same techniques to be shooting with Godox. It's only the, the equipment that's different. So don't worry the fact that um, I'm using Profoto gear because if I used any other gear, it would still be exactly the same. It's only the process that's different. I use Profoto because I want something that's going to constantly work all the time. It gives me a uniform result all the time, but the process is exactly the same. So if you shoot with Godex, you're just going to get just as good results as I get. Um, you know, there's not going to be any difference at all. So don't get sort of sucking in too much about the, the equipment's different. It's not. It's, it's your techniques that are, that are there that matter. It's just that I have Pro Photo, so naturally I'm going to be using it. Uh, but if I, if I can ever get some Godox, I'll actually use that for you and, and show you how it works for me. But there's no way I'm going to buy that when I have Pro Photo gear. It's just not worth it for me. Um, what else are people saying? Uh, <clears throat> uh, as we said, the G5 firmware is on the corner. Let's wait for the ultimate review. I know, how is that firmware update? Gee, I wish Sony would do that. That's incredible what they've given us with that Sony firmware. I still don't know if the autofocus is going to be that good, but um, the things that they're giving if, if for filmmakers is incredible. I mean, yeah, I will. I'll talk about that when it's released. Oh, Fahrenheit. Uh, more. It'll be, well, it would be around about, Ben, it probably would be around about 90 to 100 at that time of year. Uh, Gilbert's here. Hi, Gilbert. Um, Richard said, hi, David. Can the Pro Photo uh, trigger just to HSS on the A6500? No, it can't. The only, uh, the only cameras that they're supporting at this stage with the Pro Photo are the A7 series, uh, the A7 IIs, A7R2. Uh, are the only cameras that they're giving HSS and um, uh, TTL. They haven't even, they're not even supporting the A9 yet. Um, so I would... I. I, I can use it obviously with my a, A7R2 and it will give me that. If I shoot with the A9, I have to shoot manual and I have to sync up to 250th. It won't go above that. Um, so that's that's the issue at the moment with the A9. They, they will bring out a firmware upgrade eventually, but you've, not at this stage. Uh, Profoto will work with Olympus. They've just released an Olympus um, high-speed trigger. They also work with uh, Nikon and Canon, obviously, and... Um, Obviously, Sony, they're the, the camera manufacturers that they're working with at this stage. But I have to wait for a, an upgraded firmware for the uh, A9. Um, Techno said, uh, David, exactly what I'm doing, though. I'm just learning and not going pro. I still think uh, skills are very transferable, uh, necessary uh, for video later on. They are, and all the skills are transferable. Like I said, I've had to learn video. So I was just like you guys. I've only started doing video for the, from probably the last 12 months. So before that, I didn't do any. Before I started YouTube, I did no video at all. So it, 
Once you've got these photography skills, remember the lighting is very similar. Things like that, posing, I mean, if you're doing with models and stuff like that is very similar. And the cameras are just amazing now, like the way the Sonys can work between sort of the stills and the video. So they are transferable. So you, you really do have to get onto it, guys, to, uh, you know, do that sort of stuff. Get onto video because it's a big game changer. Um, David said, where do you find models uh, when you're trying to build your portfolio? Now, I did just talk about that recently in what, setting up your photography business. I don't... I don't have to look for them, to be honest, David. They, they always pay for their shoots with me. 99% uh, of the people that you see on my YouTube channel have paid for those shoots, so I very rarely do free ones. But I am going to do a free one when I do the GH5 review because, to be honest, I wouldn't be using the GH5 for doing portraits. Um, but I want to show you guys how, how it can work. But I'm not going to charge someone to do that. I would use my Sony gear if I was using that. So I'm, I'm just going to put out a, a model call. Now, I have enough people following me that if I put out a model call, I know I will get people to um, respond. But check out the video that I did put up recently, and I talk all about that, uh, how you get models and stuff like that. Um, I'm lucky in the fact that now that I have a, a, a good name in the industry here in Australia anyway, that I, I can get... Um, models very, very easily if I do want them. But like I said, 99% of the people that shoot with me have paid for that shoot. Um, what else have we got? Uh, 28 to 40 degrees centigrade is 84, yes, to 105. Yeah, and that's what it would roughly be uh, over there, Jim, by, uh, here at Christmas time. Um, whether, in ex whether in Australia, whether in Canada, you win. <laughs> yeah, I know, but a lot warmer here. Uh, and we don't get the cold winters, but you get the nice snow. Um, Godox might send you a review. Unit. Well, they might one day, and I would review it. But again, if anyone sends me something to review, I'm still going to tell the truth to you guys. I'm not going to lie to you guys. And they have to understand that. If they send me anything to review, I'm not going to give a glowing review unless I actually think it would be worthwhile to use. Uh, Michael made that donation. Thank you so much, Michael. Uh, Manuel Autis, when you get hired to shoot a wedding for stills... Um, and video, do you do both or do you hire someone to do the video? No, I do both. Um, I will hire someone when I do a wedding to carry the gear, that, but that's the only thing that they will actually do. They'll just take the gear or they might man the camera when I walk away sort of filming the ceremony and stuff like that, and I'll set it up for them and then I'll just walk away and they'll just make sure it doesn't stop recording, um, things like that. But no, I'm doing both. I'm often holding two cameras. Um, and like the good cam parts with these cameras now, you can set up the custom functions to sort of hit custom functions. I can take shots like with my A6500 or the A7R2 and then I can immediately switch to video and do a quick vi uh, clip as well. Um, so that's it. The GH5 that I've bought will be just being used for video. Um, Adapted Lenses said, where do you find, uh, what do you find the biggest differences between Fuji and Sony? Well, you know what, I haven't used Fuji. I, I think Fuji tend to look fantastic. If I was just doing stills, I mean, I would have possibly considered Fuji. Uh, but they don't have full frame, and that was an issue for me. When I moved from Nikon to Sony, uh, I looked, because I was using all full frame on, on Nikon, I didn't want to basically lose that. So I moved to Sony, and at the time, there were only, one, only people offering the full frame uh, to be able to do stills and video at the same time. So that's the reason why I went to Sony. And, and really, they're still the only one doing that at this stage. So if, if you're talking about just doing still photography, well, Fuji are fine. But again, remember, it's, it's not full frame. Uh, and if that matters to you, like for low light, things like that, uh, you still can't beat full frame. Where the full frame will excel is in low light situations. So if you're doing things like wedding and you're working in, in low light uh, venues often, well, then you, you really do still have to use full frame um, gear. And, and even for video, like like the issue for me was uh, the GH5 gives fantastic results if you're talking about good lighting and even if you add lighting. But the second you were in an area where you couldn't use that and you had to up the ISO to above 3200, the GH5 struggles. That's where I'll immediately go back to the Sonys and I can shoot with them in almost pitch darkness. And that's only because they have the full frame. So you still do need both. And that's the difference for me between Fuji and Sony is that they haven't got that full frame um, camera. Um, how about a tutorial on uh, A7R2 iFocus? Um, it's very easy, Vic. 
Uh, perhaps I will do one for you one day on that, but incredibly easy to use. And the A9 particularly is a game changer with, with the AI uh, autofocus. So yeah, I might show that for you one day. Ben Smith said 28 degrees Celsius is 82. Yep, cool. Um, what else have we got? Gilbert TV said, is anyone having issues with YouTube loading since they updated their format? Um, oh, so it's taking ages. I've, it's been all right for me, Gilbert. Um, Jim said, thanks for all you do, mate. Um, time to go. <laughs> Get better, Susie. Lay off that sauce. I know, poor Susie, that fall she had. Oh, you might have to give her a tablet or something later. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, what other questions, guys, we've got? Otherwise, I'm going to head off and do something. Um, we've still got a few watching, though, so it's pretty good for this time of night. I didn't think I'd have as many here. Now, I'll remember, I, I am still going to show you that colour correction video. I've just about finished it, actually, so I may do that in the next few days. Um, I'm going to give you a, a presentation. It's going to be pretty full on. So you're going to have to be prepared to go through a bit of theory, but I have got a full thing on how colour works and then it'll relate to correcting images in Photoshop and Lightroom. So I'm going to give that to you shortly. Um, ben said she passed out. <laughs> so I've got that tutorial coming up. I probably might even also do one this week on the um, setting up your photography business again. I better get stuck back into that again. And obviously I'll have the live show for you on um, Thursday, uh, your time uh, as well. Vic's... Um, Going to bed, so I don't blame you. Vic, have a good sleep, mate. Um, enjoy the uh, your snooze. <laughs> oh, I love it. Now, like I said too, watch that thing on uh, that video that I just said on that gimbal and let me know what you guys think about that gimbal because I'd be curious to know what you guys think about that. Uh, Gilbert said, I'm to London for the Roto Light workshop. Oh, okay, that'll be cool. Yeah, what, they're releasing a new light, aren't they, Roto Light? So it'll be interesting to see what that is. Uh, we'll know shortly, I suppose, what they're actually coming up with again. Um, I noticed that they have that EOS that was released um, too. That, look, there's a few things that are an issue with me with um, the, the continuous lighting. And, and I don't know, and this is what I want to try and tell you guys, that you have to be very, very careful if you're thinking about moving on to continuous lighting instead of flash. That they, continuous lighting is incredibly challenging to use for, for the models and things like that. And that's what you've got to... Um, be aware of that it's very very bright uh, and that it almost blinds your talent and that's where you've got to be really careful about that situation so there's issues with the continuous light and that's why I don't think flash is going to go away anytime soon um, so be careful on that I often hear people say should I go with continuous light or should I go with flash and you do need both and you're still going to have issues with continuous light with overpowering the sun um, but just be careful that you don't put all your hedge all your bets in continuous lighting because you do need both guys and and having continuous lighting um, is, is just not as good I don't think if you're talking about uh, using for strobes and things like that where you want to use HSS and overpower the sun you, d you don't want to make your, your your models eyes your iris close up because that light's so bright you know and they have to be really really close if you want to do something that's showing environmental you have to be too close to the model and then you have to retouch them out so these are, are things that you've got to think about and as Gilbert said um, a bit of both and that's what I use I use both and I think that's the way you're going to have to work on this so don't hedge your bets on everything all in one you do have to have both um, you have to have the continuous as well as um, flashlight so yeah Still get a good flashlight set up. Don't underestimate a uh, good flash. Uh, well, that might be it, guys, because some um, questions are drying up. Uh, so we might leave it there for the day, and um, we'll have a, a chat again uh, soon. Like I just thought I'd pop in today and have a bit of a chat with you all, uh, and we could sort of talk things over, and you can throw some questions at me. Uh, if you have any questions later on, just leave them down below, and obviously we can... Uh, I'll answer you there as well. Let me know if you think what you think about that gimbal, because I'd love to know what you think about that. Like I said, the downsides, I suppose, I don't think it does inverted mode, so that could be a real issue. Um, David said, what would you recommend for an entry-level continuous light option? Um, well, I, I think the Neo Roto lights are fantastic if you're talking about entry-level. Um, they're really, really good. Um, but like I said, I, I, honestly, if you could... Try and save up and go for something like the ice light because it just gives you beautiful light. I know it's $400 US, but save 
a little bit longer to get something that will give you stunning light to start out with and it also gives you that nice soft look without using diffusers and things like that. And that's a problem, like when I use the Neo Roto lights, the light is very hard and that's the issue with that. You then have to use diffusers in front of that light to make it soft, whereas something like the ice light, uh, you don't need diffusers on it. It's very, very soft just on its own. So that's something to think about. So if you're trying to save up, keep saving and then get a better light because remember, uh, the more you spend on these, usually the better it is. It's, you do get what you pay for. So I'd probably say keep saving and get something better. Um, ben said $4.99 US, yeah, for the ice light. Yeah, it's $4.99, so it's basically $500, yeah. Now you may get some cheaper ones if you look uh, online if you, because that's the version two. Uh, if you went on eBay or something, you might find some people selling the other ones for a little bit, the version one, for a little bit cheaper. Um, now, they are $500, but trust me, like I said, you get what you pay for. Um, and I'm not, like I said, I get nothing from my uh, Westcott to promote that. I just adore that lighting. Uh, and when you look at my wedding images with the brides, that you, you'll sort of see, you can't tell that that's had lighting put on because it does look like window light. I can't get that from the uh, Neo Roto lights. It's just not soft enough unless I use diffusers, uh, whereas there's no diffusion used with those ice lights. So it's fantastic for run and gun because I can just walk into any location with the ice lights, use them bare as they are, and it's soft lighting. Um, so just, just think about that when you, you, you know, that you, you're sort of paying for lighting. Remember, you do only get what you get. Um, aperture is uh, very good for Continual lighting, yeah they are, and I've got a couple of aperture lights. Um, I've got the smaller ones, uh, which is uh, up here actually. Um, it, you can't see it, but I've got one there, and I also use a, a larger light that I've got in the studio uh, that's aperture as well. Um, I wasn't even aware of it until you mentioned it previously. Uh, you're talking about the ice lights, David? Yeah, they're incredible. Yeah, incredible lights. Do you use barn doors? Yes, I do. Uh, I use barn doors on all of those ice lights. Um, they're stunning, uh, the barn doors, the, the way that they work. Uh, so you can control it. You know, you can just have a fraction of the face lit up. Um, they, they're really good. Yeah, I've got uh, three sets of barn doors. So I've got three sets for each light, or one set, I mean, for each light. But I don't use, I, and I just use um, like a, a uh, paper, uh, not paper, a foil that I got from um, the, sh the uh, camera shop that gives me the incandescent, the yellow. So I'm just using a um, cheap, a uh, bit of the material that I use for that to make it, uh, and I just hold it on with um, a rubber band, so elastic band. Do you use that? Yes, I said I use the barn doors for that as well. So like I said, guys, remember, there's always cheap options to things, but if you're seriously going to make it in this industry, you have to often, sometimes, try and save up and buy the best you can. And look, you, you, the problem is if you buy something cheap, then you're gonna to have to also buy a diffuser material for that uh, light to make it really, really soft and nice. That becomes an issue, and then how do you use it on your own? I can use the ice light on my own. I can hold the ice light with one hand, and I can use the camera with the other. Or I can put another ice light on a, on a stand at the back to give them hair light. And I know that that's gonna be soft light without having anything else in it. And that's a big difference for me. Remember, I'm only gonna tell you the truth about how I work. The, the issue is if you use something that's cheaper, it becomes hard, and that's the thing. If you're doing run and gun stuff, you wanna make it easy for yourself. Try and save up, spend a little bit more, and get something that really will help you with your uh, photography to move forward, and that's the way that I look at it. I'd prefer to do without for a while, than use something that's just cheap and it's gonna make things hard. Um, so just keep saving. I know it's tough, I know it's tough, but you'll thank me in the end that you did. Um, like the idea or thought that you can use ice lights without, uh, yeah, that's the thing, guys. I mean, it's the problem is it's using diffusion can be awkward. If it's windy, uh, it becomes awkward because how are you going to hold that on your own? Then you need an assistant to hold that light. Then it becomes awkward. And if you're trying to work on your own, and often you do have to do that, at least I know I can use the ice light without anything, without any issues at all of, of having it blow over or not be soft. 
And, and that's the thing with the ice light. It's, it is a very, very soft light on its own. And remember, I've got both. I've got the Neo Rotor lights plus the ice lights. So I'm going to be telling you the truth. I love the Neo Rotor lights too, but they're a different usage for me. I'll use those more for video and trying to light up couples and things like that. But if I'm doing something that's soft and I want a beautiful look with a bride or something like that, I'm going to be using the ice lights. I'm not going to be using the Neo Rotor lights. Um. <laughs> Tech said also good for noticing huntsman spiders. <laughs> I'm about buying it right in the first time, David. And that's the thing, yeah, I, I want to save you guys money because remember, the problem is if you buy cheap, then you're not going to be happy with it. Then you're going to sell it. You're going to make no money by the time you sell it. I'm still on the version one of those ice lights, so I haven't even got version two. I've had them three years and they're still amazing today. Uh, the version two, I, I think they're two times brighter than what I've got for my, my lights. So eventually, if they do go, I will probably... Uh, well, I'll, I won't even sell them. I'll just buy the new ones when I need new ones. But I'm still going to stick with those ice lights at this stage because I think that they're the best you can get for, for that type of portraiture work. They're not the best for video because the throw is not long enough. But if you're talking about portraits, there's nothing better. And I'm telling you that I've used ev lots out there uh, that uh, just don't give you that soft light that... that it is without having to do retouching or use diffusers and things like that. Like I said, it's the closest thing you can get to window light, portable without diffusers. And that, that's the thing that I love about those lights. They're, they're stunning. Not to mention, they are so cool when you use them and everyone thinks you'd like Star Wars. <laughs> I can't tell you the number of people that want to hold those lights for me because they just look like Darth Vader with the, or, you know, the um, Star Wars character because, they, you know, you're throwing those lights around. Um, so that, that's another thing too. You'll never have any issues about anyone holding them. And they are really nice to hold because they're a stick. Uh, it's really easy to use and you can direct the light very, very easily with them. You know, it's, it, and it works so well in that respect. Um, whereas the Neo lights are, are sort of a bit harder to hold. They're round. They're not, they're not as nice to hold. Whereas this has a grip and it's a handle that you can actually hold onto, which, you know. Um, totally and. uh, Dylan there said, Ice Light 2 is terrific. Uh, yeah, so you've got them, yeah. And you'll, you'll agree with me, won't you, that they are, I think they're the best light on the market. They, they really are the best light on the market. I wish I was getting a kickback from them. Um, David said, my uh, problem is I'm not making money for my photography yet. Yep, yeah. and that's, that's the thing, David. I can understand totally what you're saying. Um, but remember, just save. Save up until you can actually get one. There's no hurry, remember, in doing this. Use natural light if, you trying to, uh, if you're struggling. Get some jobs that are using natural light and build up some work. Then use that money that you're actually uh, getting from doing that type of work to buy some gear. You really shouldn't go into debt, really. And I, I'm all for not going into debt to buy gear because it really puts a lot of pressure on your business. So try, if you can, to take your time. Build up slowly, but build up right. And this is why I'm saying get the right gear in the beginning uh, because it does make a massive difference. And like I said, I've had those lights for three years and I haven't had to upgrade those lights. And this is the difference between buying good and not buying cheap in the beginning. If I'd bought cheap stuff in the beginning, I probably would have used them for a little bit and then I would have wanted to get rid of them. And, and they just haven't served me right and I've lost money on them. Um, so save up. I know, like you're saying, you're not earning enough money yet, but keep saving and eventually you'll have enough to get one. You know, build up over time and then eventually you'll get it and you'll thank me. Uh... So any more questions before we call it a day? Yeah, better... Uh... Dylan said, better to buy high quality gear when you can. I know, look, sometimes things can be overpriced. And don't get me wrong, if something was overpriced, I would tell you that it's overpriced. And I would tell you that. If I thought something was just ridiculously priced and, and it wouldn't be worthwhile buying, I'd say, guys, don't buy that because it is too expensive for what you're actually getting. Um, but I, I wouldn't say that about the ice lights. I think they are worth the value that, that you're getting off them because, like I said, there's nothing I can use anywhere that's giving me that light on a stick that gives me window light that I can use. And remember for me, all my portrait shoots are about taming that light and giving the light that I need. And if you're dealing with things like, um, like I said, brides and things like that, or even model shoots in the city in the evening, nothing better. So, uh, 
BMB film said, let's start talking about the upcoming Nick on Mirrorless. I know, that's going to be interesting. I, I can't wait to see what they release. And you know what? Like I've said all, uh, all along, competition is the best thing that we can actually ever get. So I can't wait for Nikon and Canon to hopefully produce something great because you know what? I'm locked into Sony now, but I think that will push Sony even more. So I can't wait for that to happen. More competition, the better it is. If those companies died, Sony would have no reason to innovate and then we get nothing. And I don't want that to happen. Um, David said, trust me, I upgraded from the A7R2 and a 7200 2.8 and 85 1.4 and 2470 2.8. That's good, David. Um, <laughs> David said, it's called Vaporware. It'll never going to come out. Well, I hope it does because I really hope there is some competition. Like I said, the new D850 is an amazing camera. Um, incredible. If I was uh, on Nikon, at least I would probably buy that and it might hold people there from jumping ship for a while. Uh, but they are going to have to bring out a mirrorless because clearly you can't compete with things like the EVF and stuff that Sony are offering. Um, they just have to do something to combat that. And look at what the, the Panasonic have just released with their new firmware. Honestly, like Canon must be absolutely shitting themselves uh, with what... Um, the GH5 have just released. You know, you're talking about a uh, high def color that they're just releasing in that firmware upgrade. It's 400 megabits in their shooting. I mean, it's incredible what they're giving people for for, for cameras. There's nothing under $10,000 for video that will, will match that. Now, Sony are gonna have to respond to that with their A7S II or whatever, A7S III. Sony are gonna have to bring something out to combat that, and I really hope they do. And again, the GH5 has given competition. So again, it's good for all of us guys. Um, but it's gonna be interesting to see how Sony will uh, answer that uh, new GH5 firmware. Um, Dylan said, I use the eye slide in my left and my A7R with the Sony Zeiss 35 1.4 in my right. And that's exactly the way I work too, Dylan. Um, it, and it's fantastic. It's not heavy. I can just hold it. And that's the beauty with the Sony cameras. They're nice and light. You can hold them one-handed. Um, it's great if you're a single shooter. And that's what's great. Yeah. The, the, the issue with me, like I said, if I'm holding the Neo Roto light is I have to hold this big thing like that. And it's awkward. I can't really hold that in one hand. Whereas I can easily with the uh, ice light. Um, BNB Film said the GH5 is crazy. Look, I'm not going to say to... If you're talking about photography... Uh, and even if you're talking about overall camera, the A6700 is a better camera still. If you're talking about video, though, at the moment, I honestly believe nothing will touch that camera at the moment. Um, but I'm sure Sony are going to come out with something that will be amazing shortly, we hope, anyway. Um, Techno Extreme said, in Canada, any light used in winter outside is an ice light. Oh, so they do... Oh, because <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> I just got that then. Yeah, that's cool. But they are, like I said, amazing lights. Well, let's see what um, they release uh, coming up, because I know Jason Lanyer was doing that uh, live broadcast soon, so they may come out with something that's going to blow our mind. So we'll just wait and see uh, what they bring out. I still love that form factor, though. I still love that being able to hold a tube. The other thing I love, too, guys, is that when you screw two of these together, that then you can light up a whole body. Whereas it's harder to do that with something that's round. So the ice light is perfect even for a full body. And they're things that I love about the way the ice lights work. Um, David said, I work in camera sales and mirrorless cameras, Canon mirrorless cameras uh, very rarely get purchased yet because they're just not good enough yet. Uh, I don't know what Canon are even thinking about, honestly. Oh, they've got to really change their thinking. David said, I sell more Fuji, Panasonic and Sony and not much Canon um, because of the limited amount of lenses available. Yep, I understand that. That's interesting. Are you from the States, David? I'm just curious. Um, Techno Extreme said, how often do you use three ice lights versus two? I, I usually, I'll often use two because I'll usually light separation on the back. Um, I'll only use three if I have assistance because then it, it gets too hard to manage. Um, but if you watched my uh, video when I did the uh, makeup, which was the glitter one, if you go back and watch that, you'll see that I used three ice lights for that shoot. I, I think I used two on the front, and then I used a hair one on the back as well, and I even used a Neo Rotor lights at the back, uh, lighting at the background. Um, sometimes if I'm using uh, doing wedding shoots and I want to light up a whole room and stuff like that, I'll have someone hold a third ice light, but I always take the three ice lights with me, but I often use two because I always like to light up the hair and separate. 
that. And even in, in like a nice lit room, I'll often use the ice light to sort of light up the face and, and you know, get a nicer feel about it uh, as well with the face. Because like I said, it's just so much like window light. It's beautiful. Um, never thought about screwing the ice lights together. Yeah, they come with a little adapter that uh, has a, it, it's like a little screw that you actually screw underneath and then they both lights actually join together um, and work that way. Um, have I got my keys in here? Do you want me to show you? Because I can go and grab them if you want me to show you. I'll go and grab it. So bear with me just for a second. So let me just switch to the big screen. All right, so, so this is why I'm saying about the, the ice lights are just beautiful to hold, all right? So unlike when you're holding something that's round, um, I can just say, you know, direct this to wherever I want to go. Now, the actual, this is the, uh, the actual, um, oh God, what are they called? So then you can start, I can't even remember, <laughs> I've gone blank. <laughs> Isn't that shocking? Uh, so you can use these to just basically move around. Now I'll turn it on. And then you'll see that you can control it from, you know, like a tiny slither if you want to come in. So they have an awful lot of um, full control like when you're actually using them. And it does give you barn doors, that's what they're called, yeah. Um, so the barn doors work really, really well, and they all fold, you know, you can just fold them out together. Now, like I said, that's the foil that I use to make it um, for uh, if I'm using incandescent light. But this little screw that you have on top will screw together. And you can have any number of these that can be screwed together. So like now, oops, see, it's really big. So I could light up my whole body, if I turn these on. You can see now that I can... So now I could light up my whole body. So that's, that's, how they, that's how they all work together. So, you know, and they have a little control at the back. Uh, hang on, let me just turn this one on. I'll just unscrew it. So they have a little control at the back that gives you um, your power. So you turn them on by just hitting in here. And then that it's actually up or down in power. So you'll sort of see if I go up, they're quite bright. But And then if I want to come down, you can sort of see that it's now giving me a little bit of fill. And like I said, I can control through here if I want to just fill up small areas so you can like make slithers of light you can do all different things with them because you've got so much control um, with how they work and that's why I love them because I sometimes will uh, join them all together and then I can light up a whole model in one go so then I could use three because I could have one light behind the model's hair to give separation from the back and often my assistant will crouch down behind them and hold one behind them to give nice separation from the hair. And then you can have the two at the front that you can hold and then you can be lighting up the whole body at the same time, which is, you know, it's it works fantastic. It's such a good idea. Um, barn door, yeah, he said barn door. Uh, what, so what's Michael said there? Um, I wonder if David will let me borrow ice lights. <laughs> Um, what else is said? If you screw them together, it makes you... I oh know, see, it does. It looks like a lightsaber, and that's when people love holding them because they are like lightsabers. The second you bring them out in a wedding, everyone goes, oh, they love them. It's, uh, you're having everyone wanting to play with them and everything. It's funny. Michael said, these days, almost any camera that comes out meets the mark of what people would call great specs. And you're right, Michael, they do. Every camera now is, is incredible if you think about it. If you can't shoot anything with even a low-end camera that's released today... You're just not a good photographer, and that's the thing about it. Um, don't get too, you know, heated up by gear. 
if you don't use nice new or old gear, it's just expensive pieces of metal. Exactly, Michael. Get out and shoot. I love you. I love you. Um, what you're saying there. Uh, ben said uh, the adapter is made of composite material made from $100 bills. <laughs> I wonder if it is Ben. I don't know because they do look. Let's see the adapter. Let me see if I can take it off. I'll show you what it is. That's the adapter there. And like I said, they also come, they last around, oh no, a while. They, they last at least a good hour with the internal battery. But then I've got external batteries that connect in through here and it just plugs into this point through there. And then you, you get hours up with the external battery. Um, but like I said, this is version one. So the version two, uh, a double, they, I think they're twice as bright as what these are. Um, and they have a different system, I think, different battery that connects on it, just pulls out and plugs back in. So that's how those new ones work. Um, fan, they're fantastic. Um, so this is excellent. I'm going to try it. Yeah, it's well worthwhile. It works great for doing models. Um, David said, true, Michael. Pierce, but when you work a 40 to 50 hour week, finding time to shoot can be more difficult. The thing is, David, you have to find the time. And that's the thing. If you don't get experience shooting, you're never, ever going to progress. And that's the thing. I always tell people starting up, you have to have a second, you have to be working because you'll never make the money having a business in photography to start up with. You'll go broke because you just won't have the clientele to do it. So you have to be doing two jobs until you can build up enough clientele to actually work. The unfortunate thing is, David, that you have to get out and find time to do it. If you're serious about setting up a photography business, you just have to find time. Uh, and there's nothing better than, than actually getting out shooting. Um, Dylan said they travel well too. Yep, they do. They're, they're great for traveling. Uh, ben said, will you, uh, will you never find the time? You have to make the time and you do. I agree, Ben. You just have to find the time. If you're serious about uh, moving in photography and you love it and it's your passion, you just have to get out and do it. And you just, I know it can be hard because you're working full time as well, but you've just got to try and find the time to get out and do it. Remember, no one is going to hire you until you've got a big enough portfolio. So you just have to keep working at it and working at it and working at it. Uh, and, you know, you just have to put in the hours. There's no other way you can get out of it. It, it can be tough. Um, Techno said, I shot macro of bees in my garden today. Oh, lovely. I bet they came out beautiful. Did they? 200 shots. Only three were good. And that's what you'd expect. You know what? You might be lucky sometimes to get one good shot. But all of those made it all worthwhile. And that's what I tell people. When my models come, I actually tell them that we're probably going to take 200 shots today. But we may only like one to three of them. And that's the expectations you've got to tell people because it's very, very hard to get that one image that you actually adore. And I'm always up front with people right from the beginning saying, well, we may get all these shots, but we may only love two or three. Um, and, it, and that's good. Like if you've got that hit rate and you've got three that's worthwhile, even one would have made it worthwhile. Uh, so, yeah, I agree with you totally. All right, guys. Well, we might call it a day, I think. Um, so keep tuned, keep watching if you've got the um, little bell thing saying when my uh, talk's coming up, because like I said, I'll be giving that color talk probably sometime this week. Uh, and I'll also go back onto that setting up your business, your, uh, wedding and photography business, because I want to get back onto that with you all. Uh, I've got things like showing you my website, how that was set up and how I get um, contracts and everything done. So there's heaps and stacks of stuff that I can show you um, through that. Uh, like I want to go through that color theory with you. Uh, and I'll See you also again, definitely for Thursday's live show. Um, so that'll be all, guys. So thanks so much for watching. Um, and I'll see you all again for the uh, next video. So have a great evening, guys, and a great day coming ahead for, uh, for everyone else. So I, I know I'll show you how that gimbal is. Uh, as soon as I get it, I'll do a review of that to show you how it compares, say, for instance, to that um, Came TV that I've got. Um, all right, guys. Thanks, David. Thanks, everyone. See you later.